The Watership Down podcast is intended for listeners who are familiar with the plot. There will be spoilers. This episode is scripted, narrated, recorded and edited by Newell Fisher. Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 193. Well, we did it for the fifth time. And as far as I can make out, we have now gone through the entire audiovisual and literary history of Watership Down, with only the 2023 graphic novel to go. So, what is going to happen in this episode? Well, it's quite simple, really. First, we're going to look back at the Netflix series in its broader context, and then we're going to look forward to what comes next. So, let's get into it. Looking back, as a thought experiment, just imagine this. Imagine that the 1978 film, widely seen as the best love portrayal of Watership Down, had been made to be 100% faithful to the book. Every single scene and every single line of dialogue being included, including all of the tales of Ella Carrera. You could even have a flashback to reported scenes, such as the rats in the barn that we learn of as the group arrive at the foot of Watership Down. How long would this version of Watership Down be? Well, for a start, it would have to be a very long series, not a film. Now, obviously, I would watch it, as I imagine would many of you. But as wonderful as it would be for us to watch, and it definitely would be, would such a 100% faithful version of Watership Down ever be commercially viable? Very sadly, the answer is probably no. Such a version of Watership Down would involve long scenes in which all that was happening were conversations and the actual action would be too infrequent. This very much works in a novel, but not in a film. And, of course, Richard Adams' beautiful descriptions of nature, one of the best-loved features of the novel, could only be briefly represented visually, otherwise such an extended film would seem more like an art-based series. A series that, once again, I personally would happily watch in full. But let's imagine placing that imagined wonderful version of Warship Down at one end of a sliding scale and give it a score of 10 out of 10, simply because it would be basically the original novel in visual form. And now, for the sake of argument, let's put the 1999-2001 to TV series, the portrayal of Watership Down that I think we can all broadly agree strays the most from the original story, at the other end of the scale and give it a score of zero. I know it contains many elements of the original story, but what else are you going to place at zero? The Great Gatsby? Lord of the Flies? War and Peace? This can only be a comparative scale after all. So then, and here is the main question for our purposes. Where would you honestly place the Netflix miniseries on that scale, and why? To help you decide, I'm going to express an opinion about two other versions of Watership Down. An opinion that you may well disagree with. First of all, the audiovisual version of Watership Down that is closest to our idealised extended Watership Down series, in my opinion, is the 1984 Australian Broadcasting Corporation radio play. Despite its almost complete re-scripting of the dialogue, it retains more elements of the original story and in the right order than any other version. So I'm giving it 8 out of 10. And now I'll get even more controversial. Bearing in mind that our sliding scale is not a measurement of how popular versions of Watership Down are, after all, how well well known is the 1984 radio play, but rather of how faithful they are to the original, I can only really give the 1978 film a 6 out of 10. It retains much of the original dialogue, unlike the 1984 radio play, but plays around with the running order far too much to score above the radio play, in my opinion. Let me be clear that simply missing things out due to the time available, although it does affect the score, is arguably not as serious as actually changing the order of events, or even worse, inserting new events. The 1978 film had only 90 minutes to tell its story. That inevitably drags its score down as it could not be 100% faithful to the book in that time. But it also messes with the running order. 
Encountering the beanfield after the road is relatively minor, but, as already covered many episodes ago, it also inserts Captain Holly's impossible journey to Watership Down from the destroyed Sandalford via Ephrafa. I have always thought this was unnecessary. There were other ways to introduce Ephrafa. For example, by only mentioning Holly's diplomatic mission to Ephrafa in passing. But anyway, bearing in mind the above, what about the Netflix version? Well, for a start... It had roughly the same time as the 1984 Radio Bay to tell its story. And although it represents the events from the book it includes in roughly the right order, it also misses far too many of them out, in my opinion, in favour of events it inserts into the action. So, for example, we see the slightly farcical escape from the Sandalford Owslot on a dustbin lid down the River Enborn, but not the escape from Wimbort on a punt on the River Test. And then there are the inserted romances, the most key of which, between Hazel and Clover, becomes a major element of his expedition to Ephrafa after she is kidnapped from a misty warship down by the Ephrafa Nalsla. Now, there are a good, many good elements to the Netflix version, in particular the voice cast and soundtrack, and many of the visuals are impressive, in particular the representation of Fiverr's vi- visions. But I cannot ignore the seeming tendency of the Netflix version to draw ideas from the 1999-2001 to TV series, such as the introduction of romance, the Hawkbit dandelion partnership and the proximity of Ephrafa. As I repeatedly said while we were going through the miniseries, a modern streaming audience probably needs to be kept interested to a far greater degree than used to be the case, however regrettable this might be. But this could have been achieved perfectly adequately by just cutting out or reducing the slower paced parts of the original story. For a start, Once you basically take out the tales of Ella Crera, which every version except the 1984 radio play and, ironically, the 1999-2001 to TV series basically does, you immediately have a lot more leeway to represent the original story. And so, for the above reasons, I can only at my most generous give the Netflix miniseries 4 out of 10, purely for representation of the original story. For me... It displays an actual lack of respect for the source material in favour of a ripping yarn aimed at a Netflix audience. I'll let you Google that very British phrase. The 1999-2001 TV series was aimed at children, and its score of 0 out of 10 in no way takes away from the honesty of that aim. It begins with the original story, though dealt with very briefly, and then plays to its target audience unashamedly though also, given the time available, including many more elements from the original story along the way, some more successfully than others. It even inserts extra tales of Ella Crera. The 1978 film, despite any criticisms, shows reverence for the source material, and in particular the integrity of the characters of the main cast. And the 1984 radio play goes out of its way to cram in as much of the original story as it possibly can, despite falling down on dialogue and some representation of character. But the Netflix miniseries had as much time as the 1984 radio play, and I just do not sense much reverence in it for the original plot or for the characters. Overall, it was a huge wasted opportunity in my very sad opinion. I so wanted to love this first adult-oriented film version of Watership Down for 40 years. But although it is a fun watch in its own right, Its disrespect for the original story and characters was too frequent and too glaring to allow me to fully enjoy it. I can only hope that the next film version of Watership Down, for there surely will be one, does a better job. Looking Forward So, what comes next? Well, you might have noticed that the 200th episode of the podcast is fast approaching. For the 200th episode, I have something very different planned from what I did for the 100th episode. Back then, this podcast was right in the middle of the available material on Watership Down, and so the episode was very celebratory. Whereas we are now approaching the end of that material, so a different approach seems called for. So the 200th episode is going to be called The Index and will be the launch of an ongoing project I've been working on to make the contents of the first 200 episodes far easier to explore. 
I'll say no more on that for now. I am not going to begin looking at the graphic novel until after episode 200, which, you may have noticed, leaves me with six episodes spare. Those six episodes will be look, used to look in some detail at the eleven rabbits who leave Sandalford Warren, their characters and actions, and how they evolve through the various portrayals of Watership Down. Or didn't, because they were left out. We will begin with the dissenters on the common, Acorn, Speedwell and Hawkbit, and work our way through the group, ending with Hazel Ra himself. After episode 200, we will begin looking in detail at the 34 chapters of the graphic novel, one chapter per week, which I'm really looking forward to. But I guess a lot of you will be wondering what comes after that. I've always said that this podcast cannot keep going on themed episodes alone, and I still think that is true. I've thought carefully about going through Richard Adams' other works, perhaps starting with Plague Dogs, or even looking at other works of anthropomorphic fiction. And while it is possible that these things might happen at some point in the future, I have decided that after I have finished the graphic novel, this podcast will definitely stop being weekly. I am sorry if this is disappointing, but this is mainly due to our personal circumstances in the coming year, which look like being very changeable. Shortly after I began the podcast, the biggest crisis of my adult life came along as we moved into my parents' house to become their carers. For a while, the podcast only kept going due to the hard work of Captain of Owsler, John Ruths. But eventually things settled down and I was able to devote more my time to it again, properly. Without going into too much detail, in the coming year, it looks likely that we are going to have to start dealing with the other end of that equation – and I have responsibilities to my family that are likely to start taking up a lot of my time again. Add to that my current ill health, and you have a set of circumstances in which my focus will need to be very much elsewhere. This time I'm not going to be expecting anyone to script the podcast for me. And so, as a weekly podcast, this is now very much the twilight of the Watership Down podcast. I will try my very hardest to keep the episodes on the graphic novel weekly, but I have to let you know that circumstances may not allow that, and that as a result, some episodes may have to be fortnightly, or every two weeks, but I will try to avoid that if I can. The podcast will still exist after we finish the graphic novel, as will the YouTube channel, but I will no longer make any guarantees about the frequency of episodes after that point. Of course, at some point in the future, another version of Watership Down may come along, and if that does happen, and circumstances allow, who knows what might happen. And of course, there are YouTube site visits that have still yet to happen. And if they do happen, the audio will re be released as a podcast episode as before. Also, just because a weekly podcast cannot be kept going on themed episodes alone, that does not mean that the occasional themed episode won't happen. But in the meantime, I think we have always known that the end of weekly episodes has been a possibility at some point. And sadly, that time is definitely now approaching. But whatever happens in the world of Watership Down, we can always be sure that the primroses will eventually bloom again. With my apologies for this rather downbeat episode, next time we begin our exploration of the eleven rabbits who left Sandalford Warren, as we look at Acorn, Speedwell and Hawkbit. Mm -hmm.